Hallelujah. Thank you. We're going to see your sister Janice right now. And she's going to come to you in a long way. Y'all give her a hand.
God knows how to fix it. Yeah. If he's ever fixed anything for you, then you know that he is a fixer. There's nothing he can't fix. We thank God for the fixing power of Jesus. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you, Lord, for this preaching moment. Someone needs to hear from you. Someone has came into this building, God, seeking answers that only you can provide. Speak now, God, for your servants are listening. We thank you for those listening around the world on Facebook. Bless them, God. You know what they are in need of. Speak to our hearts, Holy Spirit. Give us the word to live by. These are all blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen. Amen. Mark, the third chapter. Withered hand. 
The word with it means that it was paralyzed. Amen. Ancient Christian tradition tells us that this man was a stonemason who had injured his hand on the job in an accident. Amen. As the story goes, he heard that Jesus was in town and he came to seek healing from the Lord. Others speculate that this man is actually a plant. Some people believe that this man was placed in the congregation by the Pharisees in an effort to trap Jesus. I feel that this view is in line with the flow of the text. The most likely scenario is that they found this man and said something like this. Sir, we hear that you have injured your hand. And that sure looks really painful. Mm -hmm. Well, come with us to the synagogue. Uh, I heard that that fellow, that preacher, that itinerant preacher, Jesus, is going to be there today. He can heal, you know. If you go with us, there is a good chance that he will heal your hand. Wouldn't you like that? Come on, go with us. You know, every invitation is not necessarily an invitation from God. Amen. Either they had planted this man, or they had spotted him in the crowd. Either way, uh, they are watching Jesus to see what he's going to do. They are still a little upset from their encounter with the Lord in the wheat field. In the previous chapter, amen, Jesus showed them up. When they tried to trap him about his disciples not washing their hands. They wanted to find evidence against him to see that he is a lawbreaker. They are looking for any excuse to put an end to his ministry and to his life. How I many you know that Jesus always shows up when people are hurting and needy? Such is the heart of our Lord. He, he desires to heal the hurts to bind the wounds, to restore strength, to straighten out situations. Can I get a witness? Yeah. The Lord is always present in the place of hurting. He, he'll always move toward the one who is hurting the most. Amen. Amen. If you're hurting today, God will find his way to where you're sitting. Yeah. And will sit right next to you. Yeah. Come on, can I get a witness? Yeah. I know you will because you my need even before I walked into the building today. Amen. He said, Come to me, Lord, you that labor and a heavy labor, and I will give. Jesus likens himself to the shepherd who leaves the 99 of his flock in order to find the one that's lost. That's our Lord. Let's look closely at our text. We begin here with the man's hand. The man's hand. Verse 1 says that he entered the synagogue again. And a man was there who had a withered hand. This miracle takes place in a synagogue on the Sabbath day. Mark says that he entered the synagogue again. That lets us know that Jesus was consistent in his attendance, Amen. unlike some of us. In this particular synagogue, there was a man there uh, who had a withered hand. Withered means shriveled up, uh, dried up, or a wasting or shrinking of one part of a limb. Okay. It was the man's hand, not his arm, right. that was with it. Right. Right. He could move his arm, yeah. but he had no use of his hand. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Luke, being specific as doctors are, says in Luke 6 and 6, now it happened on another Sabbath also that he entered the synagogue and taught, and a man was there whose right hand was withered. Now look, the word withered is a perfect participle in the Greek language which indicates an action completed in the past that has present 
finished results. What you talking about, preacher? This indicates that something happened to the man's hand to cause it to wither. He could have had an accident or could have had a disease which caused his hand to wither. But this man was not born with this deformity. He knew what it was like to have the use of both of his hands. But now being in his present condition, he was unable to do the things that he was once able to do. This man, even though he had a withered hand, did not have a withered heart. He was in the synagogue, amen, on the Sabbath to worship. Uh, we have to give him credit. He didn't let his hand that was withered hinder him from being in the house of the worship. Can I get a witness? For some of us, amen, let us get a withered toenail or a withered hairstyle, amen. Uh, we make any kind of excuse not to show up, amen. But here this man, amen, shows up with his witheredness. Look at somebody say, bring your witheredness to the church house. Don't sleep on it. Can I get a witness? Don't pull the covers over it. Don't try to run from it. Don't sweep it under the covers. Can I get a witness? Bring it. That's right, To Jesus. Hold on, brother. Yeah. We're going to get there. Brother. What hinders you from being faithful in God's house? Is it really a legitimate excuse? Woke up late. The ride didn't come. They didn't wake me up on time. Can I get a witness? But you got up on time and go to work. Can I get a witness? You used to get on time and you was out there doing whatever you wanted to do. Matter of fact, you showed up early. Can I get a witness? Didn't nobody have to remind you that there's a party over here, amen? You Googled it! Can I get a winner? Yeah. We discovered that the man's hand was withered. Next, we discover not only the man's hand, but the misguided hearts. Chapter 2 says, verse 2 says, they watched. It says, so they watched Jesus closely, whether he would heal the man on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. At the end of Mark chapter 2, you see that the Pharisees already had a round with Jesus about his disciples picking the heads of grain on the Sabbath day. Yes. Now they had not forgotten what had happened and now they were determined to catch Jesus doing wrong. Mm -hmm. These Pharisees watched Jesus like a hawk. Mm -hmm. They played the spy on Jesus. Yeah. They watched every move he made and carefully analyzed every word he spoke. These guys would have put Magnum P.I., Colombo, and James Bond to shame. Like detectives, they monitored every movement of the master. They hated him and wanted to find something wrong with him in order to stop his ministry. They not only watched him, but they watched him closely. Have you ever had a family member or a church member that watched everything you did? <laughs> Don't answer that. They were there in the synagogue that day as well. But we learned that they weren't there that they were there, they were there for the wrong motives. And they didn't get blessed by the Lord because their hearts were far away from the Lord. Pharisees were in the synagogue not to worship, but to trap Jesus. Can I get a witness? 
These Pharisees had misguided hearts. Yes, uh, they watched everything Jesus did because Satan loves to deceive people and use them to oppose the work of God. The hardest people to win to the Lord are the religious folk. Yeah. Somebody said, uh, religious folks are for people that are trying not to go to hell and spiritual folks are for people who have been to hell and made it back. Can I get a witness? You can't tell me nothing about the Lord if he ain't delivered you from something. You, you can't tell me that he's a lawyer, amen, if you ain't never been in trouble. You, you can't tell me that he can heal, amen, if he never healed you from anything. But, but I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. Can I get a witness? I know that he picked me up and he turned me around. They were misguided by the devil as they opposed the son of the living God. He was there on that day, and the Bible says in Luke 6 and 6 that he taught the people the word of God that day. Amen. Some people come to church to watch Christians to see if they can find fault in what we do. Amen. That's why it is so important that we guard our testimony and honor Jesus in all that we do. Amen. And if they accuse you of something, right. make sure it's a lie. Yeah. Right. Some folks are like the Pharisees. They're just looking for an excuse. We must not expect uh, to have it better than Jesus. Must Jesus bear the cross alone? And all the world go free. No, there's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross for me. Amen. I'm not ready to send my Pharisees to thank you, no. <laughs> because you keep me on my knees, amen. You, you keep me learning, you learn, you taught me how to pray, amen. You taught me how to lean and depend on Jesus. What the enemy meant for evil, God meant for good. Yeah, I mean, send your enemies to thank you, no, amen. Because they push you to the church house. They push you on your knees. Amen. Thank you. When you claim Jesus, it means that you always watched by an ill-natured and spiteful world. Your conduct is scanned with a keen and jealous eye. You are a marked person. You are number one on Satan's hit list. You can do nothing without the world noticing it once you claim Jesus. When you was out there acting a fool in your silly season, nobody paid you attention. Can I get a witness? Now you want to know everything. Can I get, help me, Holy Ghost? Now you want to know what I'm doing, where I'm going, come on. And you better watch the people who come up to you and say, oh, the Lord told me to pray for you. But well, I need to know what the, exactly to pray for. Amen. Look, if the Lord told you to pray for me, you ain't got to know what to pray for. You ain't got to know the details. Just pray. Amen. 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 Because if you'll bring them home, you'll take them home. And if they gossip with you, they'll gossip about you. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Some people want to know everything you're doing. Amen. Not to pray for you, not to help you. Amen. To report you. To accuse you, can I get a witness? They're watching you, amen, not because of how anointed you are. They're watching you, amen, because they're jealous and they want what you got. Yeah. But what God has for you is for you. Amen. It is good for all Christians to keep this before their minds. Wherever we go, and whatever we do, mm -hmm. let us remember, like our master, we are watched. Yes. Let us know, yes. and let us know that church folks will watch us mm. as they did Jesus. Yeah. 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 Don't think that everybody that's asking you how you're doing yeah. is asking you that out of concern. Yeah. 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 
Be careful when someone says to you, well, you can tell me anything. You know me. I ain't going to tell nobody. But they just got finished telling you about somebody else. Amen. And you crazy enough to let them know what's happening. Amen. And then when things go wrong, you, you try to figure out what happened. You know what happened? Amen. You opened your mouth when you weren't supposed to. Everything ain't meant to be said. These misguided hearts, they watched, next we see they weeped. It says, so they watched him closely, whether he would heal the man on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. The Pharisees were watching and waiting for the right moment for the Lord to mess up. They were in that service that day with ulterior motives. Yeah. Oh, yes. They didn't bless the Lord by their presence that day. Wow. Do we bless the Lord by our presence in his house? Yeah. Let me ask again. No, no, no. Do we bless the Lord with our presence mm. in his house? Yeah. 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 Or is it just, oh, here she go again. Is the Lord glad that you're in his house today? Amen. 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 Amen, Mother Mark. Because you need to be able to be sure. Amen. 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 But when you get home, or when you uh, leave out after the benediction, do you ask yourself, was the Lord pleased with my presence today? Amen. 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 Because we're always seeking his presence. But is the Lord pleased with your presence? They watched and waited to see whether the Lord Jesus would heal this man on the Sabbath. They were not worried about the condition of the man. These Pharisees cared more about the Sabbath than they did about the suffering. And we got a lot of church folk care more about the rules yeah. uh -uh. Come on. Then, uh, the law of souls. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Amen. You wrong when you tell somebody uh, uh, a visitor that's coming to maybe uh, uh, receive the Lord Jesus Christ in their life. You wrong when you tell them get out of my seat. Cut, Maria. I think I'll be up. You're wrong when you worry about where you sit in the sanctuary, then who sits in the sanctuary? And we got some churches that are like that. Can I get a witness? Don't even say amen to that. Because that ain't how we get down here. We're sophisticated, amen. We are controlled before the Lord. But look, when you know that if it had not been for the Lord, who was on your side? Can I get a witness? I will not be quiet. I will not hold my peace. Baby, I can't hold my peace. But I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul. These Pharisees had a purpose for being in the synagogue that day. It wasn't the right reasons. Yeah. And we ought to check ourselves yeah. as to why we came to church today. They watched, they waited, and we see next that they wanted. It says they watched him closely whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day so that they might accuse him. The misguided Pharisees watched the Lord, waiting for the Lord to make the wrong move, not for the man's benefit, but so that they may accuse the Lord of breaking the Sabbath. According to these men, at times, it was wrong to do right. 
What they wanted was evil in their hearts. Our desire says a lot about us. The things we desire says a lot about us. About our character. About who we really belong to. They had a purpose for being in that synagogue service that day. And it was to find fault with Jesus. Fault finders are in every church. They can never be pleased and are never happy about what the Lord is doing. Fault finders don't like the version of the Bible. They don't like the way the pastor preaches. They don't like the Sunday school teaching. They don't like the Sunday school literature. Uh, they don't like the direction of the church. They don't like the singing. They don't like the hymnal. They don't like the choir. They don't like the temperature in the sanctuary. Don't like this. Don't like that. They're too cold in there. Too hot in here. They're too loud in there. Amen. They're too long in there. They wanted the Lord to heal this man on the Sabbath so that they could bring up charges against Jesus. See, a misguided heart is like a misguided missile. A misguided missile will hit where it's not supposed to and cause damage and destruction to places and people that should have, been, should have never been hit by it. A misguided heart will bring damage and destruction to anyone who opposes it. Make sure that you don't have a misguided heart. So far, we discovered the man's hand, the misguided hearts. And next, we discover the master's command. I suggest to you that just as Jesus was in the synagogue dealing with the man with the withered hand, he is in this place Amen. dealing with any of us who acknowledge our weaknesses and our paralysis. Stand forth, Jesus says to the man with the paralyzed hand. Perhaps hoping to stir up some sense of compassion with the heart of the Pharisees as they viewed a man whose right hand dangled helplessly at his side. And then he says something so essential when he said, Stretch forth thy hand. Wait a minute, the man could have said. That's easy for you to say, but my hand is paralyzed. How can I stretch it forth? The man could have argued with Jesus. After all, he didn't know who Jesus was. Instead, he simply obeyed. He didn't argue. He didn't debate. He simply said, I. And as he stretched out his hand, the Lord met him in that place because in the Lord's declaration, there is power. When God speaks, power is released. And God's commands are God's empowerments. He don't just say it, but there's power in his word. If he says, rise, pick up your bed and walk, there's power to make you do right there. There's power to make you talk right there. There's power to make you sing right there. There's power to make you get right. If you can grab that simple concept, the word will become extremely exciting to you. To you who are saying I'm depressed. I've had demons cast out. I've gone for inner healing. I've had counseling. I've read every self-help book. And I follow every technique to no avail. And this wonderful man comes and says, stretch forth thy hand. He says, rejoice evermore, amen. This is the will of God. God's will is to heal you. God's will is to deliver you. Can I get a witness? It's your fault if you come in here paralyzed Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Sit next to all the power and leave out of here the same way you came in. 
bloody clear and get free now. Today is my day. Now. This season is my season. Can I get a witness? I heard the Lord tell me, get up. Stretch forth thy hand. You can either argue with him or you can say, if the word tells me to rejoice evermore, if the word tells me to get up, I'm going to start rejoicing right now. I'm not even going to wait till the battle is over. If the Lord says to me, get up, today is your day, stretch forth thy hand. I don't care if I can't move it. In my mind, I'm going to move it. Can I get a witness? Because if I take one step, he'll take two steps. Look at somebody say, take a step, baby. Make a decision, baby. Take a step. You can argue and say, why, this is impossible. Or you can say, Lord, in your commandment is your empowerment. I will do it today. And you shall receive power. I wish I had a witness. Can we just take a little time out for somebody to know, amen, that the Lord spoke a word over your life. Can I get a witness? When the enemy thought he had you and you was going to end up and be like that all your life. And didn't God say, stand up? Didn't God say, stretch forth your hand? Look at somebody and say, I'm healed. I'm in there, man. I'm set free. Can we get God away for what he already does? to the man. 
man. The Pharisees so far discovered a man's hand, a misguided heart, a master's command, and next we see the miraculous healing. He says to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out. And his hand was restored as whole as the other hand. How did the great physician respond to the hardness of the Pharisees? He told the man that was standing in the midst of them all to stretch out his withered hand. And how many of you know that the Lord performed the miracle that day? The man's hand was restored because the man obeyed the commandment of the Lord. He stretched out his withered hand before them all and stretched forth thy hand. That was impossible because it was withered. But how many know that with man, was it impossible? possible with God. The miracle was instantaneous. The Lord didn't need to touch the man. He didn't need to massage his hand. He didn't need to apply some medicine to the man's hand. The Lord spoke the word and the man obeyed the law and he was immediately Healed. Can I get a witness? Ah, oh, this man had suffered from a withered hand that had hindered him from functioning as he should. The Lord healed the man, and not only healed him, but he said he made him whole. Yeah, yeah. See, some some of us are healed, but we ain't whole. The Lord wants to heal you and make you whole. Can I get a witness? Many of us do not suffer from a physical hand that's with it. But we suffer from a spiritual hand that is with it. Many of us are suffering from spiritual withered hands. You know, sin paralyzes us so that we are not able to do much for Christ. Whose pierced hands saved us. But withered hands can be healed and empowered to do great things for our healer yes. in the midst of a burning and suffering creation. Oh, wow. God, if loving you is wrong, oh, I don't want to be right. right. Christ was wounded for our transgressions. Yes. He was bruised for our iniquities. Yes. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. But I dare somebody here today speak a word of life over your witheredness. You've been withered, you've been paralyzed for too long. Now the Lord not only wants to heal you, but he wants to make you whole. Is there anybody here, amen, got anything to stretch out to the Lord? Stretch out on faith. Uh, stretch out on healing. Stretch out on love. Look at somebody and say, you need to stretch out. You ain't stretched out in a long time. Uh, you need to stretch out, baby. Uh, you got your mind on other things when you need to stretch out. Look at somebody and say, stretch out. It didn't say how this story ended. And just say that the religious folks was mad that Jesus had healed the man. And they took counsel and uh, started uh, to talk about destroying Jesus. How many of you know that maybe the reason why it didn't say anything about the man is because the man looked at his hands and saw that they were new. He looked at his life and saw that he had been made whole. 
Now my right hand is just as good as my left hand. Can I get a witness? It didn't say nothing about a praise and worship team. How the singing happened. It didn't say nothing about the preacher preaching. The preaching happened. Can I get a witness? But the Lord showed me in my own way the reason why the man's praise wasn't listed in the text. It's because you got to decide for yourself how you want to respond. But as for me in my house, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, as for me in my house, I will bless the Lord at all times. The Lord did it. And I ain't ashamed of it. So the Lord picked me up and he turned me around. He, he placed my feet on solid ground. Somebody give him If you're 